Flagship church where Chuck Smith started, what, 52 years ago or something like that, 1968, was Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. Now, Pastor Chuck went on to be with the Lord. His son-in-law, Brian Broderson, took over the church. He broke away from the Calvary Chapel Association, the CCA, and he started his own grouping. But this flagship church, uh, he called me out because I said something about him without calling him, and I made a public apology of that. And then there's this clip that you're going to see momentarily where he calls us out, and I never received a call from him. I actually did a live stream in relation to this. He's not my enemy. Pastor Brian is not my enemy. He's the opportunity, but he's not my enemy. Now, what he's saying is wrong, and faithful are the wounds of a friend. That Pastor Brian, you're my friend, and I'm going to contend with you that this, what you're saying in this video is wrong, wholly wrong. And when he's saying this, he's speaking to friends of mine, like Mike McClure, who's facing $3 million of fines for standing in opposition to tyranny. My friend Ken Graves, who's facing opposition to the, by the governor of Maine because he's standing in opposition to the tyranny. Joe Pettick, John Randall, myself, John, Pastor John MacArthur. And none of us have received a phone call. And yet, he attacks us. And I'm, I... The, the attack, I'm thick-skinned, that doesn't faze me, but what bothers me is the ideology behind it. It is a cancer to the body of Christ, and it has infiltrated the flagship church of the God, or excuse me, of the Calvary Chapel movement. Just, here, here's Pastor Brian, his own words, just listen. I'm afraid that some Christians were more concerned with making sure that no one was trampling on their rights than was showing love to their neighbor by complying with pandemic restrictions and guidelines. Now that's just a fact. That's a reality that some people don't even want to think about, but it is true. You know, it's, it's a sad moment, truly, when there's a crisis in the world and there's a lack of leadership and you would hope that the church could rise to the occasion and show people God's way. This is a, an opportune moment. Moments like these don't come along all that often. But what's happened during this moment? That for many, they're more convinced than ever that they don't want to have anything to do with the church or Christians because of the way they saw Christians behaving during this pandemic. With all of the insistence on my rights. You're not going to mess with my rights. You're not going to trample my rights underfoot. Well, listen, if Jesus would have thought that way, none of us would ever be saved. If Paul would have thought that way, the gospel never would have gone anywhere outside of the, the small boundaries of Judaism. And in our day and age, if the gospel is going to advance, we've got to lay down our lives and sometimes our rights as well for the benefit of others. Yeah. Uh, this is a tweet from Pastor Brian. He says, even if we may have scripture on our side, for love's sake, we should choose, if need be, not to exercise our rights, knowing it's for the benefit of others. I just, I, I, his assumption, and that's the best I can say, because he's never come to uh, view what's going on here, God speak. We, Pastor Brian, I just want you to know over the video, we have baptized more people in this church in the last six months than the population of church about six months ago. Pastor Brian, I want you to meet a friend of mine. Mark, come on up here. Come here. <laughs> Pastor Brian, this is the owner of the pizza cookery. Her father survived a, a, a Jewish concentration camp, Holocaust. She's Jewish. And are we going to baptize you? <laughs> I came to the church because you guys were open, and I found love, yeah. and I found camaraderie, and 
And um, my own people were closed, and I didn't believe that this 99.9% .9 survival rate deserved closure of life. And you're right, we do have rights, Pastor Brian, and we should stick up for them. And you know what? When my father just told me not to ever get on the train, I will never get on the train. <laughs> to respond to Pastor Brian, but uh, my friend, Pastor Ken Graves, who's facing uh, litigation from the governor of Maine, responded far better and more articulately than I could have. Pastor Brian, this is for you from Pastor Ken Graves. My response to Brian Broderson, Brian alleges that some of us were more concerned about our rights than we were about showing love to our neighbor by complying with pandemic restrictions and guidelines. First, his insistence that only complying with pandemic restrictions would be loving our neighbor is outrageously flawed. Yes. Profoundly stupid, actually. <laughs> Brian has judged those of us who have defied our governors as doing so for selfish reasons. He presumed to know our hearts and our motivation. According to Pastor Brian, real leadership means submitting to and complying with government officials' violations of the law. That to challenge a governor in court with the law and to hold law and to hold public officials accountable was a lack of leadership. Apparently, he cannot imagine that love and courage could compel a pastor to engage in civil disobedience. Love for God that would motivate a pastor to defy the unconstitutional and unjustifiable demand that churches not gather in the name of Christ, and love for our neighbor as ourselves that would compel us to stand against officials who presume to have the power to order our neighbors to house arrest and to financial ruin. Brian is unaware that love could compel a pastor to be willing to suffer for the sake of the church that he stewards. That stewardship of the nation and our constitution also requires love, the kind of love that makes one willing to be mocked in the public square and subject to arrest and fines. I must say that the most unloving, and cowardly thing for a shepherd to do was for him to comply with the unconstitutional and unjustifiable restrictions <laughs> placed on the church. <laughs> pastor Brian and every pastor like-minded with him in this matter needs to be rebuked and indicted as blind guides who have no ability to recognize the wrong being done to their neighbors by their elected officials. Pastor Brian claims that pastors who defied tyranny were selfishly concerned about their rights was as shamefully absurd as his presumption that the tyrants that were harming our neighbors were motivated by love for our neighbors. Brian Broderson thinks better of Gavin Newsom than he does of Pastor Michael McClure. He attributes love to one and selfishness to his brother. And I'm going to add something, Pastor Brian. The state of California that shuttered the church and called it non-essential that we are now in a cross complaint and the counties dropped their suit. The state of California has spoken to our attorneys and they want to settle because we're in the discovery phase and they don't want to reveal what they've done to the population. And I am going to ask the elders for permission not to settle so that we can get And they're good men, all of them. They're brave. They faced fiduciary responsibility when we violated the restraining order, and they stood in unity. They're amazing. Thank you for 